Drones have evolved over the years and have become the perfect tool, not just for satisfying our curiosity and hobbies, but also for professional fields such as aerial photography, surveillance, agriculture, and logistics. But what makes drone design so effective in handling various terrains? And how can drones move so quickly and efficiently? In this video, we will dive deep into the mechanical design of drones, along with their electronics, controllers, sensors, intelligent algorithms, and even satellite technology. So, without further ado, let's begin this design journey, from primitive drones to the most advanced models available on the market today. Let's start with the simplest drone design, a single propeller drone. Technically, a single propeller drone generates enough lift to keep it hovering in the air. However, it lacks controllability. The only thing it can do is move vertically up or down. Another major issue is that the drone's body will continuously spin in the opposite direction of the propeller. This is a direct consequence of Newton's third law of motion. In this case, you can see that the motor's stator provides the necessary torque to rotate the rotor. According to Newton's third law, the rotor must exert an equal and opposite torque on the stator. Since the stator is attached to the drone's body, this reaction torque causes the entire drone to spin uncontrollably. One possible solution is to use the same concept as a helicopter by adding a small tail propeller to counteract the reaction torque. However, this is considered inefficient as it goes against the fundamental philosophy of drones, which prioritize simplicity, efficiency, and optimal stability for autonomous flight. As we can see, adding a tail rotor to counteract the reaction torque consumes additional power without offering significant benefits. That being said, this type of drone does exist, though only in specific applications, such as the Black Hornet, a military-grade drone designed to be compact and silent, where efficiency is less of a concern compared to stealth and maneuverability. Therefore, to maintain the fundamental philosophy of drones, a two-propeller drone design was developed. One company that has seriously pursued this concept is Zero Zero Robotics. As we mentioned earlier regarding additional propellers, we can conclude that the fewer the number of propellers, the lower the drone's energy consumption, allowing it to stay airborne for longer periods. However, the main challenge is achieving high-speed flight and sharp, rapid maneuvers, which require a higher level of control, accuracy, and stability. Unlike helicopters, a dual propeller design offers better efficiency compared to traditional helicopter designs. Yet, even with two propellers, drones still struggle with stability. This is why we hope that with advancements in control, algorithms, two propeller drones will one day achieve optimal stability. So, how does a two propeller drone compare to a helicopter in terms of efficiency and effectiveness? Let's find out. You can also see that the blades in a two propeller design rotate in opposite directions. This cancels out the motor's reaction torque preventing unwanted drone rotation. Additionally, using two propellers allows the drone to move both vertically and horizontally more responsively and quickly. This design is more efficient compared to helicopters, where the tail rotor serves only to counteract reaction torque without contributing to additional movement. What about a three-propeller design? Three-propeller drones are rarely used. The main issue with this design is the higher reaction torque in one direction, as well as gyroscopic precession problems. These factors create unnecessary complications in both the mechanical design and control algorithms. Because of these drawbacks, the next evolution in drone design has gained more interest and adoption. Now, let's move on to drones with four propellers, or quadcopters. These drones typically come in either an H-shaped or X-shaped frame, and for good reason. To understand why this design is considered the best, let's break down how a quadcopter maneuvers by looking at the fundamentals of flight dynamics, also known as degrees of freedom. One of the most essential elements in controlling a drone is throttle. This determines the amount of lift generated, allowing the drone to move vertically, either up or down. When the throttle is increased, all motors spin faster, producing greater lift, which causes the drone to rise. On the other hand, when the throttle is decreased, the motors slow down, reducing lift, and the drone begins to descend. 
Next, we have hovering. This is the state where the drone remains stable in mid-air. To achieve this, the drone's weight must be perfectly balanced with the lift force generated by the propellers. The propellers themselves use an elegantly designed airfoil shape to create lift. This force is known as thrust. Now, let's talk about pitch, which controls forward and backward movement. To move forward, the front propellers slow down, while the rear propellers speed up. This slight imbalance tilts the drone forward, allowing it to gain momentum. Once the speeds are equalized again, the drone moves steadily at that new velocity. The same principle applies when moving backward, just in reverse. Then we have roll, which allows the drone to move left or right. This works similarly to pitch, but instead involves the left and right pairs of propellers. By adjusting their speeds, the drone can tilt to the side and shift in the desired direction. Finally, there's yaw, which controls rotation. Earlier in this video, we discussed torque reaction, the force that causes a single propeller drone to spin uncontrollably. To counteract this, a quadcopter has two pairs of propellers spinning in opposite directions, effectively canceling out unwanted torque and keeping the drone stable. But if we actually want the drone to rotate, we simply need to disrupt this balance. By slightly slowing down one diagonal pair of propellers while speeding up the opposite pair, the drone generates a net torque, allowing it to rotate smoothly without losing control. This combination of throttle, pitch, roll, and yaw gives the quadcopter incredible maneuverability and precision, which is why it remains the most widely used and efficient drone design today. The quadcopter is considered the most stable type of drone. With its ability to move at high speeds and execute sharp turns with precision, it has become widely used across various industries. Now, let's dive into the propeller design and its impact on performance. Drone propellers are designed with five key factors in mind. First, rotation direction. Propellers are categorized into two types based on their rotation, clockwise and counterclockwise. The combination of these two directions is essential to maintaining drone stability, preventing uncontrolled spinning, and enabling precise maneuvering. Second, material. The material of a propeller affects its weight, durability, and performance. For example, plastic is commonly used in beginner drones because it's lightweight and affordable. Meanwhile, carbon fiber is preferred by professionals due to its high strength and energy efficiency. Third, blade count. Two blade propellers offer better efficiency and faster response. However, for improved stability, three or four blade propellers are often used. Drones designed for heavy payloads or cinematography may even use five blade propellers or more. Fourth, size. Smaller propellers provide quick response times, making them ideal for racing drones. On the other hand, larger propellers generate stronger lift making them perfect for carrying heavy loads. And finally, application. Propeller design is also tailored to its intended use. Racing drones typically use high-pitch propellers for greater speed, whereas low-pitch propellers are favored in cinematography for better stability and efficiency. There are even foldable propellers for portable drones, offering convenience when storing, like the ones used in DJI's lineup. In conclusion, these five key factors in propeller design work together to define a drone's overall performance. Choosing the right propeller depends entirely on the intended use, whether it's for speed, stability, or payload capacity. And since we've mentioned DJI quite a bit here as the standard reference, we wouldn't mind if DJI decided to sponsor us in the future. Now, let's take a closer look at the brain of a drone. Flight controller, the brain of a drone. Imagine a drone suddenly caught in a strong gust of wind. In a situation like this, the operator must adjust the speed and rotation of each propeller in less than a second. Otherwise, the drone could crash. Clearly, making such precise and rapid adjustments manually is nearly impossible. This is where the most critical component of a drone steps in to save the day, 
The Flight Controller The flight controller acts as a smart mini-pilot inside the drone, responsible for navigating it through challenging conditions. This component allows operators to control the drone with simple commands like throttle, pitch, roll, and yaw, making flying a drone as intuitive as playing a video game. Sensors The unsung heroes of modern drones To achieve such precision, the flight controller relies on various input signals from multiple sensors. Welcome to the fascinating world of drone sensors. You might be surprised to learn that most modern drone sensors are as small as an ant. These tiny yet highly accurate sensors are built using MEMS or Microelectromechanical Systems technology, microscopic machines with actual moving components. The three most crucial sensors in this system are the accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. Together, they form what's known as the IMU or Inertial Measurement Unit. The IMU is the king of drone sensors. It measures acceleration and rotation. In MEMS accelerometers, when the drone experiences force, movement occurs between internal plates. These plates have capacitance, and when their distance changes, so does the capacitance. This variation is then converted into electrical signals and sent to the flight controller for real-time calculations. To measure acceleration in all three axes, a three-axis accelerometer is required. When combined with a gyroscope, the system can also track rotation across multiple planes. Additionally, MEMS-based barometer sensors help determine the drone's altitude. Now, the flight controller or processor must accurately interpret all the signals collected by these sensors to make the right decisions. But how can we ensure that these signals are reliable? Before diving into the processor's role, it's important to understand that sensor accuracy can be affected by noise. Various factors contribute to this, such as minor defects in the sensor, mechanical vibrations from the drone's propellers, or electromagnetic interference from surrounding signals. These disturbances can introduce errors, making precise control more challenging. Modern drones use sensor fusion to overcome these challenges. For example, a GPS sensor combined with an IMU can provide basic altitude information. However, by integrating radar technology, we can achieve even greater accuracy in altitude measurements. This is the power of sensor fusion, multiple sensors working together to deliver more effective, efficient, and accurate data. Taking it a step further, modern drones are also equipped with advanced safety systems that prevent collisions, even in obstacle-filled environments. These systems rely on a combination of sensors to detect and navigate around obstacles, ensuring safer and more reliable flights. Stereo cameras and LiDAR, the eyes of a drone. To navigate safely, drones rely on stereo cameras and LiDAR. Stereo cameras function like human eyes, creating a 3D map of the surroundings to detect obstacles. Meanwhile, LiDAR or light detection and ranging uses laser pulses to precisely map the environment, making it a preferred choice for high-end drones that require advanced navigation. Every time a drone flies, these systems act as its senses, continuously scanning the surroundings and feeding critical information to the flight controller. If an obstacle is detected, the drone can automatically adjust its path or pause momentarily to prevent a collision. Pretty advanced, right? This technology makes drones significantly safer, even in tight spaces or obstacle-filled environments. With all these accurate sensor signals, we now move to the control system, the brain behind the drone's decision-making process. At its core, the control system relies on control logic algorithms to minimize errors and make real-time decisions. One of the most critical algorithms used is the Kalman filter, or KF. This algorithm analyzes both past and present data to estimate the drone's position and assists in tasks like GPS navigation, return to home functions, and stabilizing the drone after being hit by strong winds. Ultimately, the Kalman filter algorithm, embedded within a processor made up of logic gates, transistors, and other components, makes intelligent decisions to adjust the speed of the BLDC motors or brushless DC motors. 
And just by precisely controlling the speed of these four motors, a quadcopter drone can adapt to challenging environments with remarkable stability. In today's market, DJI is a dominant player in the consumer drone industry. They leverage advanced flight control algorithms, dual IMUs for greater reliability, and vibration dampening systems to minimize sensor errors, all contributing to their industry-leading precision. In contrast, companies like Parrot, Autel, and Unique struggle to match DJI's dominance in the consumer UAV market. Their drones lack the same level of refinement and precision found in DJI products, making them less competitive. We've seen how the Kalman filter algorithm ensures smooth and stable flight by intelligently controlling BLDC motors. But where does the power for these motors, electronic circuits, antennas, and sensors come from? Lithium-ion batteries provide the necessary energy, while radio frequency technology allows the drone to receive control signals from the user. For consumer drones, communication range typically falls between 5 to 10 kilometers, ensuring a reliable connection for aerial operations. Now, here's an interesting question. What if a drone accidentally flies beyond its communication range? To recover a lost drone, modern models utilize GPS technology and cellular networks simultaneously. Before takeoff, operators set a home location using GPS, which is stored in the drone's memory and processor as the designated starting point. This allows a lost drone to automatically return to its home location if it loses signal, a feature commonly known as return to home or RTH. And that wraps up our discussion for today's video. As always, if you enjoyed this topic, feel free to join the discussion in the comments. Share your experiences, the joys and challenges of using drones or even constructive feedback on this video or how we present our content. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.